he was searching to help people make deals in real estate. <laughs> and I also had the joyful uh, honor of playing poker with her a couple of times. So, just to give you an idea that Reverend G is a, she's one of us. <laughs> we all came into an ministry a little bit later in life. Very few of us started out at the age of 10 knowing we were going to be ministers. And yet as we got older, we realized that we had a connection with Source that was great enough to qualify us to be able to tell other people about it. And when we talk, we learn. Every time one of you gives a talk, you find out who you truly are. Mm -hmm. And since our, our wonderful Reverend G became a minister just a few weeks ago. Yay! Yay. Yay. And uh, she uh, is uh, following the path that I had originally, and uh, uh, because she is doing uh, Church of Religious Science uh, Energies, and she works for the CSL, Center for, uh, for Spiritual Living. Mm -hmm. And um, I was so delighted when I saw that she was going to become a minister because those paths are just like I was talking about with your spiritual path. Mm -hmm. Becoming a minister is a spiritual <coughs> path wherever you're doing it or however you're doing it. And so I'm so excited to have her here today. I keep saying Reverend G because when I met her, that was not her name. And so, I, as you know, I like to call people whatever they want to be called. And so, mm. I, I'm, I'm not going to call her Susan today, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to call her Reverend G because I think that has such a wonderful ring to it. Uh, please welcome Reverend G. Yay! Bravo. And G, is it okay if we film you? Yes, yes, of course. Mm. Uh, as long as I don't break it. No, no, so far so good. <laughs> and we have water up here. And even Kleenex that I had to go to great expense to get. <laughs> I'll be sure to use it. Well, happy Sunday, everyone. Happy, happy Sunday. Sunday. Thank you, Reverend Lani. I really appreciate you so much. And, you know, coming here, you know, we have all these different ideas sometimes, you know, a new group of people and stuff. But I, I'm going to deviate already from my talk. Okay. <laughs> you need to get it to happen. Get the microphone that's how you get recorded. i got to get used to that. Okay. Here you go. So I, because usually I'm all around. Yeah. So a little something new for me. So as I was sitting here this morning, listening to everyone and your request for prayer, and, and, and of course Janet and her beautiful, mm -hmm. she's someone else we've known each other for I don't know how many decades, but anyway, I was so moved by the love in the room. So much love. And I was going to save this uh, little thing that I'm going to read to you for my uh, workshop this afternoon. But I think it's appropriate to start off with it. And I'm just going to kind of read it to you. There's a few little quotes. And love. And this is from Charles Fillmore in the Metaphysical Bible. Love, the pure essence of being that binds together the whole human family. Of all the attributes of God, love is undoubtedly the most beautiful. In divine mind, love is the power that joins and binds in divine harmony and the universe and everything in the great harmonizing principle known to man. And then from Corinthians, we have divine love is impersonal. Mm. It loves for the sake of loving. Mm. It is not concerned with what or who it loves, wow. nor with a return of love. Like the sun, the joy is in the shining forth of its nature. Love is a patient Love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. And then again with Charles, he says, Love is an inner quality that sees good everywhere and in everybody. It insists that all is good and by refusing to see anything but good in it causes that quality finally to appear uppermost in itself and in all things. Mm. That is so powerful. 
and to finish it out with Romans is, love is the great harmonizer and healer. Whoever calls on God as Holy Spirit for healing is calling on divine love. Divine love will bring your own to you. Thank you. Adjust all misunderstandings you, and make your life and affairs healthy, happy, harmonious, and free. Love, therefore, is the fulfillment of the law. Mm, the law. The law. Mm, I thought the law and the law won. <laughs> oh, man, that was, I couldn't resist. <laughs> <laughs> you give me a minute. I know, I know. Anyone else singing but me, trust me. <laughs> so anyway, I just went to, wanted to go with that because I just was so taken up by the love in the room here this morning. Mm -hmm. And so, plus I will be posing a few questions today that you can take with you to ponder about. I have this thing called pondering. I love pondering. And usually I'll send out texts, just various texts to people with a word or a sentence say, ponder this. You know, just spur the moment craziness. But I love that divine insanity, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yes. So let us begin today's conversation about service to the one. Now, we are going to be talking about birthing change through love of self, little s, big s. But we're going to also talk about service to the one. But def let's talk about it by defining what that is. And yes, I did say conversation, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Don't worry, we talk. <laughs> well, usually, see, I'm the one who's speaking, but you got yours going on up here in your head, you know. And sometimes it does get pretty loud, you know. I, I feel that vibration sometimes when I'm up here. So I'm just saying that uh, we're going to have a good vibe. Good, good conversation. And so when we're speaking about service in Isaiah, it goes to chapter 40, verse 31. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall grow wings as a dove. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. That's what I need. <laughs> <laughs> well, what that? Not the fainting part. Down. You got that down? <laughs> yeah. Some of you got the not worrying part down. Right? So, but anyway, let, let's... let's, let's <laughs> Sure. Let we me have just... a lot of people here who know it already, but let's read it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, again with Isaiah. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall grow wings as a dove. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. So, in metaphysical terms, to wait upon the Lord means to serve God above all else. Mm. To have faith that God responds favorably to you. And with such discipline, this can bring us to have an expectancy for great good in our lives. That it will be fulfilled according to the level of our belief. Mm. See, that's the kicker, right? to the level of our belief. This love in action through the law of manifestation as cause, as effect, simply stays true to the fact of following your spiritual practice. Following your spiritual practice is to wait upon the Lord before all else, to serve the one. Now let us look and ask ourselves about <coughs> how <coughs> many would immediately respond by saying that what the one is, that's God, it's force, it's the source, it's the essence, the whole thing, the universe. And, you know, you'd be correct about that. But let us, let us go a little bit deeper about spirit so we can connect some dots. Rumi says that we are not the drop in the ocean. We are the ocean in the drop. <laughs> okay. Add that with the Dalai Lama saying, if you're not living in love, then you're living in fear. That's very powerful understanding, isn't it? 
So connecting these quotes take us closer to an understanding of the service to the one. So we're going to get down to it. Ready? Okay, let's go. All right. In Matthew 22, verses 36 through 39, the Pharisees asked Jesus, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And second is like this. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. It would be a wonderful thing if everybody would remember that. We hear... No judgment on my part. <laughs> Just, you know, sometimes that voice comes Just out. saying. Just <laughs> saying. <laughs> so we hear this. And on the surface, we know what's said, right? These are the greatest two insights which we are to love spirit with absolutely everything that we are, everything that we think, everything that we say, everything that we do. And that means loving yourself with everything you think, everything you say, everything you do. And it means that also with that guy at work that's got the bad breath. <laughs> you know, loving them, just loving them up. And Altoids help. And they do, they do. And I like the little green mints too. All right. So the kicker is to really understand this is to give uh, that the good that you give your neighbor. So I'm going to start with that again because this is so cool. The good that you give your neighbor is the good that you give to God. And it is only equal to the good. Thank you for finishing my sentence. It is. It was in the head. <laughs> so we got that conversation going on. Right? That you give to yourself. The good that we give to ourselves. That's right. That's right. See, you know, you're my people. This already. You're, you're, you're my people. So, in the glossary of the Science of Mind text which I love for my light reading. I, I, I love the glossary. I just sit and read the glossary of this book. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to talk about love and what Ernest says here in the glossary. It says, love is the self-givingness of the spirit through the desire of life to express itself in terms of creation. Emerson tells us that love is a synonym for God. We are also told in the New Testament that he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Uh, love is free from condemnation. And as it is free from fear, and this part I truly love, love is a cosmic force whose sweep is irresistible. Mm. Mm. Whose sweep is irresistible. Well, we can stop right there. <laughs> but no, 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 no. You're mine yet for a little bit longer. <laughs> yes. Say it for everybody. Uh, yeah. Can I have a help? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now we're really getting to connect those dots. And I know there are people here that believe that, and we're going to talk about this love. We're going to bring this out and bring it into ourselves. You know, that little S, that big yes. And I know there's people here that feel that they, they do love themselves. You've done your work, you know, you've done forgiveness and, and all of that, and you're feeling the love. And then I know that there's some people here that don't love themselves so much. They may not go around saying it, but they have this little thing hidden inside of them. And that's, that's something that we need to hold in high regard for them, that it can come out and blossom into their other type of love. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to have you do a little experiment. Now, in your mind, just keep this to yourself. Don't share it with your partner now like you do everything else. <laughs> but just imagine a measuring stick. 
about, you know, and it has the numbers on it like 1 to 20. And 20 being the most absolutely great level of loving yourself that could ever be. 20 is it. And 10 is about, yeah, that's about average, so-so. And then 1, well, you're not loving yourself so much. All right, so just imagine that. And just as, as soon as I ask you, just, just, just stay with me now. And I want you to pick a number now on that scale how much you love yourself. Mm -hmm. Whatever right. first came to your mind. Do you want us to tell you? No. Oh. I want you to keep it to yourself. Okay. And I want you to just pay attention and see if that changes as we continue on here this morning. Okay? And, uh, Is that self, including body, mind, spirit, everything? Or do you have a definition of self? Thank you, Donnie. That is a wonderful action. Ac Question, sorry. That just, uh, that's the whole package. That's what we're talking about here, is the whole package. There's no little pieces that you can set out on the shelf. We're talking mind, body, spirit, the whole thing, even your ingrown toenails. Yeah. So, now I don't know, you know, if you all got something to write with or not to take some notes. And it's not that I might say something so profound, but you may have a profound thought. So I just, uh, you know, unfortunately I don't have a bunch of stuff to give out to you to take notes. But I know you will keep this in the memory of your mind. And if something really catches you, you might ask your neighbor, hey, you got something I can drop something down with. And the videotape will be available on it. And the videotape. Thank you, Corky. I mean, what? So where we're going to go now with love, with love, is, um, and I know you know this person, or most of everyone here, uh, you know, is familiar with Louise Hay. Yes, mm -hmm. oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Wonderful, beautiful Louise Hay. Who I believe just had a birthday, didn't she yeah, not? She was 88? Yeah. Yeah. Is, that, wow. is that what she is yeah. now? And so in one of her books, The Power is Within You, in the chapter on how to love yourself, she gives us 10 steps. And we're going to go over those. And this is something that uh, you can listen to later and get a little deeper in, you know, when you have that extra time. Because you all practice your practice with meditation and taking time for yourself, right? Mm. Yeah. Uh -huh. See, I know. <laughs> okay, so we are going to go over those ten steps. And the first one, <laughs> you're right, I love this one. Stop criticizing yourself. <coughs> Stop. Stop. Do not pass go. I know it's easier said than done for most of us. And our inner critic, you know, likes to pitch a tent there, right? <laughs> you know, have a little fireplace, make some s'mores. Yay! You know, have a kumbaya, you know. But you got, you know, don't pitch the tent. If something comes into your head, just let it go on by. You know, just, hey. Right when you find work. Yeah. <laughs> Number two in Louise's book. We must stop scaring ourselves. I mean, how often do we think that we're scaring ourselves? But we do. We scare ourselves. Many of us terrorize ourselves, actually. Don't stick, you know, so what you need to do is, you know, because you're terrorized because you're not sticking to the facts. You're getting caught up in the story of everything, right? So you got to stop that. I mean, just catch yourself and say, okay, what are the facts about this? You know, facts change. They're not principle. They change. Principle is the only thing, truth, that does not change. Right? So, basically, you know, you wind up blowing everything out of proportion, and you just scare yourself. I mean, you all have had some days like that, right? Oh, yeah. A couple of yeah. yeah, see? I don't know. We're, we're there. So... The, the third one, the third one is to be gentle and kind and patient with yourself. <sighs> the thing to remember, <laughs> so the, number four is the one I'm going to have for you. 
Thank you. We'll finish up number three. Is that impatience is a resistance to learning. Ooh. <laughs> so you're all so proud of learning. I say, oh, I'm open at the top. Oh, you know, I keep learning, but oh, wait, I got to go. Sorry. <laughs> this line's too long. <laughs> So what can you learn while you're standing there, you know? <laughs> the resistance. All right. So quirky, my friend. We must be kind to our minds. <laughs> she says not to hate ourselves for having negative thoughts. Wow. We can think of our thoughts as building us up rather than beating us up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> you just go with it and say, oh, well, how can I raise myself higher with that, right? Mm -hmm. So the whole thing is, you know, staying conscious. So, <coughs> right. so that's the bottom line here. All right, number five. You ready? This is the fun one. You ready? Yeah. You all, you all can do this, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Praise yourself. Yay! Oh. Praise yourself. I say, praise yourself. Yeah, yeah, let's just let it all out and say, yeah, I'm good. Acknowledge your power, your God, yourself, and allow and accept your good. That's praising yourself when you accept your good. Yeah, there you go. She's doing her dance. She's doing her dance. Her little happy dance. But this is so true, you know? We... we some, we don't want to accept our good sometimes, right? You know that. Well, then you got to remember to praise yourself, darling. And number six is loving yourself means supporting yourself. Reach out to friends. You don't have to do this alone. You know? I mean, we're never alone. I mean, source, spirit, God, the name, the very thing itself, whatever you may call it, Aunt Mary. You know, she's there for you. You just got to reach out, but you reach out to those that are in your community. Don't be afraid and don't be ashamed. You're just going to be loved when you say, I can use a little support right now. And love your negatives. Love your negatives. They are part of your creation. Right? This is fertile ground for transformation. For bring it all in, Jan. Yeah, that's right. And because we know that we have contrast in life. That's how, that's what this is all about. We have contrast so we can see that and love ourselves through it and transform ourselves and raise ourselves higher through contrast. And take care of your body. That's number eight <coughs> about loving yourself. Take care of your body. Now, we are all different in this. You know what your body temple needs. And it may be different for someone else. So there is no judgment here. You know, don't buy into what everyone says you should do about taking care of yourself and your body. Your inner self, your, your essence, your truth of who you are knows this how to take care of this body temple so your spirit may be in action and give the love that is for the whole world, right? So, take care of your body. And one of the big things, number nine, and Louise Hay is just huge on this, and I know you've all come across this at some point, and that is mirror work, having a mirror. And standing in front of that mirror and, I, and I, I, I invite you to do this, okay, at least three times if you haven't ever done it, but three days in a row, that you stand in front of that mirror and you say, I love you. Mm -hmm. Look at yourself, say, I love you. Then say, what can I do for you today? Mm -hmm. Now let's take it even one step further. How can I make you happy? Whoa. Wow, you know, yeah, you've heard of that, stand in front of the mirror and say, I love you. But ask, what can I do for you today? You're having a conversation with your higher self here. 
And there's nothing but love in that room in front of that mirror looking back at you. So ask yourself, through that divine intervention of the mirror, saying, what can I do for you today? And then listen. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, listen. Because it will come to you. And follow what it says. Oh. And then do it. Again, you're my people. <laughs> we have this. So, number ten. <clears throat> Turn wrong. Love yourself now. Hey. There's no waiting. There's no sh no lying. You're first. Just love yourself now. Don't wait till you get it right. How do we all just kind of love ourselves? Can we all love yourself? Yeah, just good loves, yeah. good hugs. Oh, just knowing that yeah. this is a pure love. This is divine love. This is the truth of the essence of who you are. And you can each day put that love in motion and loving yourself more and more and more. Just taking one minute even. Set your smartphone for 30 seconds or 60 seconds and just... Say, I give myself permission to love myself now without any other thoughts. Can we get mm. an app for that? <laughs> <laughs> I, there might be one out there. Right? I think you got something going there. I'm you know, thinking. An app for love yourself. Love right? yourself. <clears throat> hmm. There are so many apps, aren't there? <laughs> so, please echo after me. God is good all the time. God is good all the time. I am good all the time. I am good all the time. Uh, there was a little difference there between when you're talking about God and talking about you, but we're going to come back to that, okay? I mean, I'm just saying, I heard that. A little different. Okay, so then, <clears throat> here are some of the questions I promised. Again, is, this is just a ponder. How do we know God is good? Because the Bible tells me so. <laughs> <laughs> little ones in here. All right. Do we have to know God is good to be able to say God is good? No. No. No, no we no. lie to ourselves all the time. We can fake it till we think. Do we have to know that God is good in order to say I am good? Nope. No, 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 no. no. Oh, I love this crown. I love this crown. All right. <laughs> So it's just a little something to ponder. I want you to just take that and go a little deeper when you have a few minutes. Can we change that around, though? If I appreciate and know that I am good and I'm a part of God, then God has to be good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. And we're getting there. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, now we've got it going. Before class. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> Oh, y'all just got to come to the workshop. <laughs> all right, so anyway, all the great mystical teachers uh, talk about the attributes, characteristics of God, you know, the foremost ones, and that is light, life, love, power, beauty, peace, and joy. <clears throat> Pardon, my voice is getting a little raspy. <clears throat> Ooh. No frog. Sorry. So then it's a given that I am light. I am love. I am peace. I am power. I am beauty. And I am joy. Right? You've got her all these things and I am these things. So you think for a moment. Now just think for a moment. If you were to ask your closest friends to name only three of your top characteristics. Mm -hmm. Would any of those be in there? Mm -hmm. what, what was the list again? Okay, that I am light. I am. I am light. I am life. I am love. I am power. I am peace. I am beauty. These characteristics. Mm -hmm. I am joy. Yeah. I am joy. Thank you. So, if you, if you would ask your friends to name your top three characteristics or attributes. Would any of that fall in there? Just think about it. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, my next yeah, you had sex and you got it covered. <laughs> <laughs>
This is Dyer's Church. That, that is another program for loving yourself. <laughs> Say science does matter. <laughs> you said we could communicate. I love it. I love it. Bring it. Bring it. I, I'm ready for you. This is good. This is good. Okay. So, <laughs> oh man. So anyway, I, I'm hearing the outer conversation, but I know there's even more inner conversation going on there. And this is, and so we're going to make all this perfectly clear. And often in New Thought and Ancient Wisdom studied, studies. We say that God is in us, through us, as us. But how many times do we really say that we are in God? Mm. Perhaps it's the first place to start. That to answer all our questions. To begin and reinforce love of self. And that's what we're here talking about today. Love of self. Little s, big s. <laughs> if we truly believe that there is one divine source... One infinite intelligence that all things are of without separation, including you and I, then it stands to reason that nothing exists outside of God. Mm -hmm. Nothing. That we are truly in God, and in the very essence that is God. The stuff that everything is made of, including God. Ever think about God's man of something? The very thing, the very essence, we are in that stuff, including God. And so I just said that we are made of the same stuff that God is made of, didn't I? This is where we get the image and likeness of God. Where the Bible speaks of that. So, this God stuff is all there is, without limit, for nothing can limit God if nothing exists outside of God, right? And just as the seven characteristics of God are in God, those characteristics are the same characteristics that are in you and I. God is good all the time. Right? So we're going to say that again. Please echo with me. God, God is, is good, good all the time. time. Now come on, bring it. I am uh, good all the time. I, I am good, good all the time. time. That's what I'm talking about. That's it. So how do we bleed? So I am just so excited here. My mouth just dries up because I'm just like, got so much I want to share. Seriously then, if we are to truly love ourselves, how do we embrace the seven characteristics of self? It is said that we are known by our good deeds. But are we believed by our good deeds? Have you ever known someone at work, who, uh, or just anywhere, that does all these wonderful things, you know, they just are the first to step out, raise their hand, go do this, go do that. Somebody that just, you know, does, does, does. And you ever have that little voice sometimes in the back of your head saying, well, they're just doing that because they want to look good. You know, they want to be impo look important. You know, they want to, uh, oh, I don't know, just... Uh, be all that in a bag of chips. <laughs> you know, get the race. Have you ever had that little voice? That's a nice way of it. You know, but, I mean, I'm, I know I'm not the only one. Right? We've all had that thought at some point in our, you know, in our life. So, what does that mean then? That, our, how are we believed by our deeds? Okay. How much? Five oh, two minutes. Okay, well, we're almost there. So I'm going to speed up our little bit. So we're going to know this by the energy that's behind it. Mm -hmm. Right? It's our energy. So ask yourself, so I'm going to speed up about connecting these dots here. But ask yourself, in order about love, how does love think? 
Have you ever thought about that? No. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, how does love think? How does power think? How does peace think? Mm -hmm. All right, now we're getting a little louder in our conversation. All right, so just imagine. I mean, you don't have to take any more classes for this, okay, just to figure out how love thinks. But just imagine how love thinks. You know, play, pretend, make it all up. And eventually it will settle into you, into the knowing of how love thinks. So we must begin to think as light thinks, as love thinks, as life thinks. Basically, we must think as God thinks. We must do this to create change within ourselves. We must think as love thinks in order to truly love the self. So God has no condemnation. Right. God has no com condemnation towards himself. And therein, you being the individualized essence of the very thing itself, God has no condemnation towards you. And in truth, God's love is unconditional, <coughs> it is unlimited, and as such, you are the beloved, beloved, beloved beyond measure here on earth, on heaven, and God would not change one thing about you. Nothing. You are perfect and loved just the way that you are and just the way that you are not. That is the most important thing to understand because your, your unique self is what is the value that you give to the world. For how you see something is unlike how anyone else sees it. This is what you bring. This is the value. This is the worth of the truth of who you are. Just by being your authentic <coughs> self. And there are no exceptions to love. So I'll say this one more time since I'm cutting this short. Come to the workshop. Come, come to the workshop. The workshop is at 1 o'clock today. And how much is it? Whatever you guys said. Um, I don't know. What it says in the I forgot to put down how much. Oh, it doesn't. Thank yeah. you. Well, let, me, yeah. let me just wrap this one thing because this is important because I want you to understand you are worthy, you are the magnificent expression of source energy. The ground that you walk, are walking on is holy ground simply because you are walking on it. You should be exalted. You should be honored. You should be praised. Hymns should be sung about you and rose petals thrown at your feet. Once you really get that, life is fun. I am blessed by being here, being with you. Thank you so very, very much.